It's fact time, everybody. It's fact time in which I just state something that can easily slip people's minds, but is just a reality in this weird, changing, evolving, realigned, expanded playoff NIL portal world of college football that we currently have. It's not perfect, but it's the sport we've got. A G5 team is going to make the playoff in 2024. Everybody understands that, right? Does everybody get that? Okay. Who exactly is that going to be? If I asked you right now, which team from the group of five do you think will be the highest ranked conference champion come 2024? Where's your mind going? My mind's going to two places and potentially another one, but I like these first two quite a bit. So let's start down south with the green wave of Tulane, who just completed an 11-win season on the heels of a 12-win season in which they knocked off USC. So Tulane loses their head coach, and normally and the team I'm about to talk about, they lost their head coach too, and that seems to have been a good thing. Normally when a team loses a head coach, I'm I'm down on them. I say, mm, year of transition, mm, I don't know if this is all going to work. Tulane this offseason has been very, very busy. They've been very busy in the transfer portal. They went and got uh, Shaz Preston, that's a wide receiver who was once a time playing in Tuscaloosa, and who doesn't have a former Alabama player these days? It's very, very trendy. I'm sure it's on TikTok somewhere. Mario Williams, who's been around college football and has been in some wildly productive offenses, that guy knows a thing or two about catching passes and making his quarterback look good. And speaking of quarterback, Ty Thompson was once the highest rated recruit at the position in the history of Oregon football. Wasn't able to crack the starting rotation there because they've set a pretty high standard. Bo Nix set a very high bar. Thompson wasn't ready to play as a true freshman when Anthony Brown was there. But Thompson has demonstrated growth in the limited time he did get to see in this 2023 season, and he's a mega talent. So you bring in those offensive pieces, and then the head coach who is helping drive those moves is John Sumrall from Troy. A guy who has compiled back-to-back double-digit win seasons with the Trojans. They, they, they finished a couple seasons ago inside the top 25. When you think of group of five football powers, do you think of Troy? Probably not. John Sumrall can coach. And Tulane is a place where in the transfer portal world, their brand has been elevated so they can go get players like Ty Thompson, like Mario Williams. And you look at what has happened in the American Conference, because this is why Tulane is at the top of my list here, and Boise State's going to be a a pretty close number too. It is about having a conference championship because that is what is required. It's not who's the best G5 team, it's who's the highest ranked conference champion. And so Tulane is in a conference, the American Conference, which is probably the number two G5 league in America, now that SMU has moved on, who else is going to be contending with Tulane? A program that has won a lot of football games, over 20, in fact, in the last two years. Uh, you've, you've, got, you've got UTSA. Jeff Trailer was interested in the Texas A&M job, did not take it. Good football coach there in San Antonio for the Roadrunners. Meet me. You've got Memphis. Well, that's a solid program. They've appeared in a New Year's Six game before. Their coach has been there for a few years. And you've got, who else? SMU is a member of the ACC. Not the American, not the AAC, ACC. They wanted to be a power player. They wanted to be at the table. Well, they've got a seat there now, but that leaves a vacancy. I mean, is South Florida, who had a dominant win over Syracuse in their bowl game, going to pop after a 7-6 and six year? Are they suddenly a conference contender? Because I look around, and I don't see how Tulane isn't the unbelievable favorite. Well, not unbelievable. That's not the right word. Let me, let me, let me try that line again. I don't know how you look at the American Conference and, and, and come to a conclusion that isn't Tulane is the undisputed favorite going into next year. Does that mean they'll be the highest ranked conference champion? Well, Boise State might have something to say about that. So Boise State, for my money, is the premier group of five brand 
in all of college football. They are the OG Cinderella, David swinging at Goliath, 07 Fiesta Bowl, one of the greatest sporting events I have ever watched in my entire life. So Spencer Danielson is the head coach there now. He's been on staff since 2017 when he was just a graduate assistant. Since 2021, he's been the defensive coordinator. Andy Avalos was fired in the middle of what was a disappointing year for the Broncos. Danielson took over and proceeded to go 3-0 against Mountain West teams. He won the conference championship, again with a team that was struggling mightily. And then they went and lost to UCLA in the Los Angeles Bowl. Well, there's not a whole lot of shame there. UCLA was a pretty solid team. Chip Kelly, historically, a pretty good coach. But they added Malachi Nelson. Well, that was once upon a time USC's potential quarterback of the future. Mega, mega talented. Now, is he experienced? Nope. Nope, he definitely is not. But there are a couple of other Power 5 transfers on the roster, one at receiver, one at corner. And I look at Boise State and say, if you get Boise State right, that team runs Mountain West. Now, the reason that I've got Tulane as the more likely group of five entrant into the college football playoff is that Boise State is playing in a tougher league. You've got Air Force. Troy Calhoun does nothing but win a lot of football games. You've got Fresno State. Again, Jeff Tedford just, just kind of wins a lot of football games. UNLV is going to have a new quarterback, but Barry Odom has got a good thing going there in Las Vegas. Wyoming is replacing a legendary head coach, but they've been good over the last couple of years. We'll see what San Diego State is in year one with Sean Lewis. I suspect that'll take a year or two to build into a conference contender. That lineup of teams to get through, though, and avoid losses to is much more difficult than what Tulane has. And consider this. Boise State has got Oregon State on their schedule. Boise State's got the Pac-2 to go through. They might be ranked, but would they be the highest ranked team? Their schedule, their path, I think, is tougher than that of Tulane, especially when you look at conference play. So Tulane and Boise State, these are first-year head coaches taking over, but I love what both bring to the table. Danielson's momentum created at the end of last year is palpable. He's parlayed that into landing a big-time quarterback recruit and John Sumrall coming over from Troy. That's a move you cannot ignore. These are the group of five teams that have the best shot to appear in the college football playoff. It's going to be somebody. It's going to be some. Watch out for James Madison. James Madison, of course, was off to a red-hot start, stumbled a little down the stretch, but that's a team that if you have a lot of success in the Sun Belt, if you're rattling off an undefeated season, well, look what Liberty did out of Conference USA. And I'd argue that the Sun Belt is a stronger league than Conference USA. So if James Madison were to go 13-0, they could be into the college football playoff. But I look at Tulane, the conference that they are in, the pedigree that it has, and the team they are assembling. I look at what Boise State has done and the conference that they are in. Those are the two teams that I highlight as the group of five teams most likely right now with the moves they've made this offseason to find themselves the highest ranked group of five conference champion and in the college football playoff. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.